The wait now for local families to learn if their loved ones are okay. Plus an update on the families from the Cajon Valley School District who have been trying to escape. In just a few days, San Diego Unified School District students will return to the classroom wearing masks indoors and outdoors. Take a look at how it will work for students. A monument honoring fallen Navy SEALs being unveiled at Miramar National Cemetery today. Why organizers say it is a long time coming. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Right now, we are following the minute-to-minute -minute developments out of Afghanistan. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Pat. I'm Virginia Chaw. In just the last 24 hours, roughly 12,500 people evacuated from Kabul. And new at midday today, we have learned two more San Diego families are among them. Congressman Darrell Issa's office updated us in just the last 90 minutes, saying a total of six families with students in the Cajon Valley Union School District are either now home or on their way. That's 20 local kids and 10 adults who are now safe. Congressman Issa released the statement on the effort saying, quote, this has been an around the clock operation and individuals inside of government and outside of it deserve our deepest thanks. But more members of our community still need our help. The mission is to bring our people home and we will continue to do it. And as for the latest on yesterday's suicide bombing attack, CNN reporting an army member is among the 13 American service members who were killed. And Wyoming's governor tweeting out this morning that one of the slain Marines is from that state. With Tuesday's evacuation deadline fast approaching, ABC's Elizabeth Schulze shows us the frantic operation to get out under the threat of more attacks. After the deadliest day for American troops in Afghanistan in more than a decade, the U.S. is moving forward with its evacuation mission. We have the ability to include evacuees on U.S. military air airlift out of Afghanistan until the very end. 10 Marines, one Navy medic, one Army soldier, and one other service member were killed in the explosion. More than 160 Afghans are dead, scores more wounded. ISIS-K is claiming responsibility for the suicide attack, the bomber detonating his explosive device at an airport entrance. President Biden now vowing retaliation. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. Former Army Ranger Jericho Denman was working with other vets to help evacuees and got out of the Kabul airport just minutes before the attack. In 20 years, I never saw uh, an operating force more sleep deprived or, or just working more than, than these Marines and, and other, you know, airmen and soldiers that were on the ground. The terror threat is still high. With just four days until the president's August 31st withdrawal deadline, officials are warning of another possible attack. We believe it is their desire to continue those attacks and we expect those attacks to continue. And we're doing everything we can to be prepared for those attacks. U.S. officials say there are up to 1,000 Americans who remain in Afghanistan and more than 5,000 people currently at the Kabul airport awaiting flights. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Flags around the country are at half staff to honor the service members killed in the terror attacks in Afghanistan. Flags at all public buildings and military posts will remain at half staff until sunset Monday to honor the 13 service members who lost their lives while helping with those evacuation efforts. Well, the man who assassinated Robert Kennedy more than 50 years ago could be granted parole today. Right now, Sirhan Sirhan is sitting before a two-person board. They will determine whether it's safe to release him from prison. Sirhan has been serving his sentence at Donovan State Prison in Otay Mesa. This is his 16th parole hearing in 53 years. What's different today is that the Los Angeles County District Attorney has decided to neither support nor oppose Sirhan's release, saying it is not a prosecutor's job to relitigate a case decades after conviction. A decision could be announced today. We will have developments this afternoon on ABC 10 News. When San Diego Unified students go back to school on Monday, they'll be wearing masks almost the entire time that they're on campus. District just announced they will now require students to wear masks both inside and outside. District will allow students to remove their masks when eating and recommend socially distanced outdoor mask breaks. I think that if it's a mandate at the school, the students should follow it. 
but I'm not sure if the administration is making the right decision for those students that are fully vaccinated. Now, students will be allowed to remove their masks during PE, sports, and performing arts. And in about a half hour, I'm going to be speaking on this subject with the Vice President of the San Diego Unified School Board, Richard Barrera. Well, the city of San Diego is mandating COVID-19 vaccinations for all city employees as a condition of continued employment. That is according to an email obtained by ABC 10 News, which was sent to all city employees. That email states employees must show proof of full vaccination by November 2nd. Now, back in July, the county announced it would require all county employees to get vaccinated or be subject to weekly testing. Well, police are investigating a suspicious death in Pacific Beach. According to San Diego police, a man was found next to a bird scooter on Hornblend Street early this morning. A crews performed CPR, took him to the hospital where doctors pronounced him dead. SDPD traffic investigators were on scene, treating it as a possible crash or a hit and run, but they found no evidence of a collision. This is happening right now, a ceremony at Miramar National Cemetery, where they are unveiling a monument honoring fallen Navy SEALs. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell is there live. Marie, organizers are saying the construction of this monument is a long time coming. In Virginia, we are told this is the first Navy SEAL monument at a national cemetery. Let me step out of the way and show you. Uh, they have gathered here as that ceremony has already started, leading up to the dedication. After taking nearly two years to build, a Navy SEAL monument now stands at the Miramar National Cemetery, honoring the elite members of the Navy's underwater demolition teams, or UDTs, who fought in World War II. Most importantly, to honor those that made the ultimate sacrifice and didn't get to come back and enjoy the freedoms that we all fought for. But creating this memorial wasn't an easy task. It was funded by the Navy SEAL Museum and the idea was brought to life by retired Navy SEAL Michael Mioli, who served as a project manager. He says this is more than a reflection of the past. We come from a very small group. I think we have 2,600 now. But back in Vietnam, we only had 350 SEALs serving at any given time, and we lost 100 of them there. It also highlights the sacrifice service members make, something that was brought to light earlier this week. It's a solemn day after another loss that we weren't expecting in Afghanistan. And as you can see, the ceremony is taking place right now. Uh, Mike tells me there are about three dozen Navy SEALs that are buried here. Live from Miramar, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Marie, thank you very much.